Shedding water and replenishing water is an important balance that affects everything in and outside of nature. Water is a resource that is everywhere, yet not abundant. Shedding, replenishing. It is such a shame and honestly kind of scary to see what people do to our water today. People just take it for granted, even when they know how muddy and brown and even orange that water can become. Imagine that you were lying by the pool and someone threw trash or food in the pool. If this kept happening, would you want to swim in that pool anymore? I know I wouldn't want to. One day we will realize how much we are damaging the water. I fear that one day it will be too late to do anything about it. Dirt held by grass, mud in the water without. Runoff kills us all. Water is ruined, common man destroying it all. Diligence will save us. Water is all running orange, waste allowed to run free. Laziness is the cause. In a way, water sheds itself for you. Like whenever you drink from a river, you are taking a part of that river. Water passionately provides for us and still us humans bite the hand that provides for us by polluting it. All life is made of water. It's sad to me to see how people Water is the essential element for all life on Earth. All things must have water to survive. Everything on Earth must have water. Like ocean, lake, river, pond, or creek. Water is a giver of life and allows wildlife to prosper. Water is precious. Water has so many different meanings to so many different people. Water is that feeling in the back of your throat, that feeling that satisfies and replenishes. The feeling that satisfies that fear, that remorse, that cough, and that thirst. Water, life support. Water, a sign of life. A flowing stream of life, rushing on the smooth rocks, the roots to our survival. Water is the main source of life. It is home to river banks, star creek waters, and rocks. All of these things help protect the organisms that live in the water. Even when hard rains make the water violent, all of these organisms can still thrive. The sediment in our creeks and rivers carves the walls of them. River banks rest side water. Green grass grows in the sunshine. Peaceful waterfalls. Hard logs rest in dirt. Happy animals run free. Water rushing down a mountain, orange sunset, or in the early morning, the you can see the clear dew on the green plants that in midday goes flowing back into the environment to keep all living things soggy with water. Mud fills the dark ground. A short man with bunker clothes was walking to the river. He was going to go fish, but as he walked up, he saw dead, scaly, squishy fish, and the, or the river was bright orange like a pumpkin. People were gathering around to take photos. He was so angry, he was determined to see who did it. He went up to where the stream started. There lived a woman. She was a farmer. Her house was brown with enormous green trees, and the floor was filled with gray, ridgy rocks. He knocked on her door and explained to him her why she was so mad. 
Apparently she was allowing her animals to dump waste into the river and fertilizer was being run off to the river. He called the authorities and she was written a fine and never again was there orange colored polluted rivers. Although that was over, there was another tragedy to come. This water, our water, holds no purity. It's flooded with toxins. The toxins of you, the toxins of me, the toxins of humanity paralyzing the hope of our tomorrows. It's very sad. Our future kids will be limited on resources because of this tragedy. It will not be as sunny anymore. The wind won't feel so good to us anymore. Nostalgia will grow larger and larger as we destroy the roots of our lives. The clear water will become unknown if we don't make a sudden change. The dark brown sediment, wet and soggy, makes it hard for the fish to breathe. Eventually, the fish suffocate and die. Nature is precious, but do, we do not always care for it like we should. Our planet is fragile, much like our watersheds. If we do not protect our water, our lives will be over. Later that day, I went on another run with my father. What we saw at a lake was horrible. They were dumping pollution into the lake. The reason I, left, I was so upset is because I used to swim in that lake, skip rocks off of it, and got so upset. A couple weeks later, we went to the officials and reported this. A few months later, we went on another run, and we noticed that the lake was a lot more clear. I was so happy that we did something about the lake. Even though water is innocent, people will take advantage of it and not care what happens to it after they're done with it. Water is so precious that it is used in churches while cleansing people of their sins. Keeping water clean is very important. To do it, we should just try and raise awareness with anybody and everybody. Water's demise will come. We will waste every drop on our selfish first world problems and forget about the developing saplings around us. Before we give off water, we must first make it clean and usable. Our lakes, ponds, rivers, and oceans are sadly being flooded with mud, moss, dirt, and sediment. The mud and flower beds that once lined the road will be reduced to piles of dry sand. The soft pebbles that lay on the riverbed will be hot and dry from the sun's rays. Not a drop of water in sight. Time has taken it all. Do not say it, I don't want to hear. Information is useless. Effort has no effect. My aim is to say, it is all useless. It is very hard to understand why a farm would treat their water with such disrespect since it is what allows them to farm. Maybe it's because they just don't know what's happening to the water when they disrespect it. We need to care for it like it does us, or else it will stop. You might say you can't make a difference, but you would be surprised the difference it does make. Someone crying, shed water, everyone crying after all of our water is gone. People who are taking action to keep our water clear need more help because there are more people taking advantage of our valuable water than helping it. Looking into the beautiful blue sea, skipping rocks, and stopping on bridges to observe the Creeker River below. Reading quietly by the poolside. We cannot wait until it makes us so anxious that rainy days become our favorite, or when we walk around sad and scared that we won't have clean water at home. We need to wake up and realize that the peaceful sights and bright sunlight may not make us happy. Most people in our country expect water. They think they control when time slows and speeds up, when resources are abundant or scarce. They forget the nature bows to no one here. Whether raindrops fall thick and heavy or not at all, it is not our choice. The hard work we put into controlling nature is an illusion. What we do have control over is our use of water. We are so determined to get more, we forget about what we already have. Violent waters wait. Woods are filled with pollution. Sunlight seeps through the clouds. Rocks fill the sad creek. Fragile lives are forgotten. Water is our lives.
The bright river runs deep while tiny raindrops patter on the soft surface. My tennis shoes slap along the dark hidden trail where moss and mud lay. Tiny saplings line the dew-covered orchards with sun-splattered petals. If you think about it, when has water not been here for you? Time is precious here, the place where hope blooms in color, waiting for a change. It takes your voice, and when you speak, only a few people might listen, but you change those people. So the question is, do we even care? <laughs>